Recently, I was thinking about this simple question. How come 6.9 million Sri Lankans got it wrong? Surely all of them cannot be idiots, even though that's exactly what the Colombo liberal idiot class would say. So what happened? How come 6.9 million Sri Lankans got it wrong? Now, prior to the election, we knew the whole character of former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajpaksa. He was a ruthless, strict, disciplined, hard-working individual. Not only the one who designed the final phase of the war, which is kind of questionable right now. Not just the war, he even led the way in uplifting the image of our capital city, Colombo. He made the city of Colombo shine like a beacon of prosperity, class and quality. So when he was elected as the presidential candidate, it was a no-brainer. At that time, after the colossal failure of the Yahapal joke, Sri Lankans were longing for discipline, structure, lawfulness, and more importantly, a direction towards growth. And Gotabe Rajapaksa was indeed set to succeed. After he became the president and after his honeymoon, honeymoon period was uh, over, all of us were left wondering, who the hell is this guy? This ain't the strong-headed, disciplined, hardline defense secretary we all were longing for as our president. Is this a very bad clone of him? Now, as Sri Lankans, this is where we need to ask the tough questions. What really happened? How come a strong-minded leader was forced to kneel and was completely neutralized and made a feeble person who could not execute simple instructions as the head of state when the entire country was collapsing apart? Let's not go all around the world to figure this out. Let's ask ourselves. If we are strong individuals, at what point will we bow down in defeat? In most instances, uh, it occurs in the instant that our enemy has some information that's detrimental to us. If they knew uh, a bit of information that would completely tarnish our image and destroy our lives, we would think twice before doing anything against that person. So what did they have on our former president that made Gotabe Rajapaksa the lion to become Gotabe Rajapaksa the lion carcass? We're told by individuals close to him that the reason he was like that uh, was because he didn't want to uh, want the United States or the collective West to bring more accusations against him on human rights. And if that happens, he will not be able to go to the United States or to the West after his presidency. But that doesn't make sense because even at the time he took oaths as the head of state of Sri Lanka, there were many allegations and accusations leveled at him by the UNHRC that were basically the same thing. He denied them all and was not even bothered about it. He was never afraid of that in the past. But now you are telling me that he, all of a sudden, he let the country go to waste a presidency to the dogs because of a simple threat of human rights as at the cesspool of bias, the UNHRC. It doesn't add up. It doesn't, does it? Then we have to obviously ask the other question. Did America have something that would end him and was, was that what individuals like Victoria Nolan, who came to Sri Lanka twice, alerted it, him to? Now, if that's the case, then what is this information that's so detrimental as Sri Lankans we have the right to know? If it was so detrimental, didn't our intelligence officials wet him before he took office? I'm sure a threat assessment would have taken place to determine that. After all, this is the highest office of our land. There's only one individual who can answer all this. And he chose to flee the country in the dead of night like a common criminal and up to date has failed to address the very souls who trusted him with their lives. We must ask these questions and find the truth to avoid repeating the same extremely costly mistakes. We'll be right back.